Welcome to Cooking with What You Have. In this series of recipes and cooking demonstrations, we will use a typical Caldwell County food pantry basket as a foundation for our recipes, along with normal ingredients that most people have in their kitchen. Our goal is quick and easy, nutritious food. Visit CaldwellFoodPantry.com for recipes and cooking videos, or visit the Caldwell County Christian Ministry Food Pantry. Hi, I'm Priscilla, the Icebox Queen, and I'm working with the Caldwell County Food Bank to show you a recipe for a chicken and potato casserole. So I've got all my ingredients laid out here. The recipe that we gave you calls for the potatoes and the chicken and the onion. Uh, and it has some additional suggestions that you could use. You could use broccoli or squash or diced bell pepper, whatever it is that you have around the house. I decided this time to use some diced broccoli. So I'm gonna mix it all together here in a big bowl. I've got about a pound of diced chicken breast. That I'm gonna lay out here in my pan. I'm gonna add, I diced these potatoes and I'm gonna add my potatoes. I diced up this onion and I'm gonna add it. And then I chose to use this diced up broccoli that I'm going to add to it, one head of diced broccoli. And then I'm going to toss it with, I've got already measured this out, but it's garlic powder, salt and pepper that I'm going to uh, toss over and I'm gonna stir all together. And then about a tablespoon of oil. And this is just vegetable oil. And then I'm gonna stir it together with my spatula. Try to make sure that all of the chicken gets some of the salt and pepper and everything gets tossed together well. And then I've got a nine by 13 baking dish. And this is definitely gonna fill it up. I'm gonna add this to my pan here. got my oven preheated to 425. Once I get this spread out in the pan, I'm gonna uh, cook it for 35 minutes to let the potatoes and the chicken get cooked through and the broccoli get all roasty. And then I'll show you how to make a sauce that we're gonna pour over the top of it. So for this part of the chicken and potato casserole, I'm gonna show you how to make a roux and a simple sauce. There's lots of things that you can do with it once you know how to make a roux uh, and make this simple sauce. Uh, and I'll talk about a few of those, but uh, this recipe will make the casserole all creamy over the top of it and uh, make it taste really good. So in my pot over here, I'm adding a tablespoon of oil and I'm gonna put it on a medium heat. And then I've got a tablespoon of flour measured out over here. And I'm going to pour in my flour and mix those together to make a paste. I, this is what'll make the sauce thicken up, the oil and the flour mixed together. And I wanna make sure that all of the flour looks wet, uh, that none of it is left out in just white flour then your whole dish will taste like uncooked flour. So I'm only cooking it long enough for this recipe to make a paste and make sure that all of the flour is, uh, looks wet and I've got it all here in a paste here. My next step is gonna be to add a cup and a half of chicken broth. I've got my container of chicken broth here that show you what I used. I'm gonna add that in and give it a good stir, trying to mix in that paste into the flour that I have. You could use a whisk for this if you wanted to. Uh, and it'll all kind of melt into the sauce as you go with it. This is also how you start a classic gravy. Uh, if you added cheese at the end of this, it would be a cheesy potato casserole. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can go with this sauce. This is a cup of whole milk. Uh, you can use whatever kind of milk you have at the house. And I'm gonna add that. And because I added milk, I'm taking this at a very low heat 
uh, or at a medium heat. I don't want it to boil too fast because milk will scald and bubble up over the top of your pot if you're not careful with it. So I'm gonna let that come up to a bubble and, uh, and continue stirring it the whole time to make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. All right, I've got this coming up to a nice boil uh, and I'm stirring the whole time to make sure that it doesn't stick to the bottom uh, and bubble over. It started to bubble up on me and I turned down the heat a little bit. So we're just gonna keep stirring and as, you, as the flour cooks into this sauce, it'll start making it thick and creamy. Uh, once it coats the back of your spoon, that's when you know that you're done with the sauce. Uh, and in this case, we'll just set it to the side until our chicken and potatoes are ready and then we'll pour it over. All right, so this sauce is thickening up nicely. Uh, it's starting to coat the sides of the pan and I can stir my spoon through it and see that it's still coating the back of my spoon and the sides of the pan. So at this point, I'm just gonna let this rest until my chicken and potatoes are done and then we'll pour it over. So our chicken and potato casserole has been in the oven for about uh, 35 minutes and all of our potatoes are fork tender. You can poke a fork through them easily. The chicken's starting to look brown. It's all definitely cooked. And I've got my sauce here that we made to make this our creamy chicken and potato casserole. And I'm just gonna pour it over the sides. Like I said earlier, if you wanted to add cheese to this, you could add it to this sauce and just stir it in, about a cup or a cup and a half of cheese, shredded cheese, and you could make this a cheesy chicken and potato casserole. Now, after I'm done putting this in, I'm gonna uh, have it in the oven at 375 for about 10 minutes. I'm not worried about, uh, everything's already cooked. I'm just making sure that it's heated through and uh, comes together as a casserole. So I'm gonna put this back in about 10 minutes and then I'll show you what it looks like. Thank you to all who have contributed to the cooking with what you have with the Icebox Queen.